All right, welcome back crime fighters for another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, the program where you get to help make Calhoun County a better and safer place for all of us. I'm Chris Wright along with Calhoun County Sheriff Matthew Wade. Hey, just got sworn in for another term on mm -hmm. January the 14th. Um, looking for good and good things to, to do for our counties. Mm -hmm. Of course, our, our hearts going out to uh, the law enforcement community throughout Alabama and the nation, but uh, Birmingham and then Mobile already this year losing officers in the line of duty. Sure, you know, on January 14th, I got sworn in, and on that day, there'd been seven law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty in 2019 at that point, so it was one every other day. And now we have uh, Birmingham and we have Mobile, and um, you know, a lot of things are said about law enforcement officers. Uh, we know the risk, but we didn't sign up to get killed. But at the same time, we signed up to serve, we signed up to protect, and that's the reason why people continue to do it. When we have seen a decline in people wanting jobs in law enforcement, but there's still an honorable profession where you can go out and make a difference each and every day. And my prayers go out to the, those families, not only their, their blood family, but their work family. And uh, I, I truly hope, as my tenure is sheriff, that I never have to deal with such in my own agency or even in our county. Um, I hope it never happens again but uh, I, I believe that the statistics show that it will. The only thing that I know to do for them is pray for them, uh, pray for our officers, also to give them good guidance and leadership of why we're doing this job. And our job is to make a difference, and our job is to help people. And that's the focus, and we gotta stay focused on that and not on the negative. And um, it's just something that I say to our people each and every day. And from the perspective of someone like myself who does not wear a badge, you know, just be careful about how we talk about law enforcement officers in our communities because the attitudes that people have toward these officers affects their safety. Absolutely, you know, um, everybody's human, not only law enforcement officers, but, but just regular citizens and, and, and things go on. But, uh, you know, we have to do a better job as law enforcement officers to make sure that we're seen as noble and we hope that the citizens will stand behind that and help us because what's spread on social media does affect everybody's thought process. Whether you're on any side of any issue, uh, you know, we need to remember that uh, we gotta be together as a country and I see more and more of division through social media and it just breaks my heart to see our country divided as such and, um, you know, and I think a large portion of that is because of social media and people's uh, 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 comments on social media is so divisive and uh, we need to find a way to come together. It has more impact than you think quite yes. often. All right, let's, let's talk about the arrests that we've gotten this week thanks to our viewers. You know, there's 4,324 people put in jail once again because somebody was willing to work with us and we want to make sure you trust us. Thank you for that and those two people there. We've never had a week where we didn't have somebody and, and we're blessed and, uh, and, and we truly thank you for it. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the first half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to this week's edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. First up in our lineup this week, Charles Bowling. Mr. Bowling, last known to be living in Lincoln, he's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance and use in possession of drug paraphernalia. Take a look at Lawrence Cooper. Mr. Cooper, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for failure to appear on theft of property third. And we'd like you to meet Michael Goins. Mr. Goins, last known to be living in East Deboga, he's wanted for failure to appear on theft by deception first. And have a look at John Wright. Mr. Wright, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted on a probation violation for possession of a controlled substance. And here is Heather Frost. Miss Frost, last known to be living in Anniston, she's wanted on a bond revocation for possession of a controlled substance and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And last up in our first half of our lineup, Algernon Jennings. Mr. Jennings, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for probation violation on possession of a controlled substance. And that's it for the first half of our lineup. Stay tuned for the second half later in the show. We are back. We'll have the uh, second half of this week's lineup for you here in just a few minutes. And we'll also talk about some property crimes here in uh, just a little bit. Uh, but Sheriff, let's, let's talk a little bit about economic impact right now. We've got uh, Pete Conroy from Jacksonville State University with us. And you know, our, our Sheriff's Office certainly hasn't been shut down. 
No, I, you know, and, and we've talked about civics off, you know, there's federal, then there's state and local and county, you know, the sheriff's office is definitely local. Mm -hmm. And so the, the shutdown hasn't affected us. Uh, not directly actually, anyway. Not directly, you know, it's affected uh, some of our families where they have spouses that, that are working for the government and we would, you know, want them to be taken care of. So, uh, Pete, um, there has been an impact locally though, hasn't there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jacksonville State University, you know, we're involved with Little River Canyon National Preserve, the Freedom Riders National Monument, and uh, then all of our friends out at the Center for Domestic Preparedness, uh, you know, they're impacted beyond measure. And uh, we talk about the government employees an awful lot, but we don't talk enough about the, uh, the contractors. These are folks that don't work directly uh, uh, for the federal government, but indirectly, and guess what? They're not going to get back pay. Yeah, a lot of people say folks are getting vacation time and, and all this. They're going to get paid eventually. In some cases, that's true. I still wouldn't call it vacation time. But uh, uh, there's a lot of people that, that are losing their income permanently because of this. Yeah, absolutely. So just for example, the Center for Domestic Preparedness, a lot of contracts to keep that place uh, moving forward. There's a, a student services contract, there's the training contract, there's security contracts, maintenance contracts, Hundreds food, of people. food services, transport, you know, all of these contractors are just, uh, you know, out of luck. And uh, so there have been some local efforts to, to assist them in whatever ways possible. But uh, more than anything, we're just hoping for a resolution. You yeah. know, and, and I've had a couple of people come to me and and I told them, come work for us. We need dispatchers or people working in the jail. Come work for us. If they call you back next week, we'll we'll gladly not make you work a two-week notice, and and we'll get the benefit from it. And uh, we've had a couple of people kind of interest interested in that, and um, that'd be something that if somebody's put out for that, we would be willing to try to help them do that. So. Well, thank you. I will pass the word, sure. and that's why you're sheriff. Good idea. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll have a resolution here soon, and we can move past sure. that. But. Uh, it, when you've got people in that situation, when it's all over, some of those people are going to have had other offers. We're going to lose some people over this. Yeah, th there already have been some that have taken jobs elsewhere in the private sector that are uh, secure and they get a paycheck. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of people that are really uh, hurting right now. And as it is, a lot of these contractors are, you know, in their 40s and they have kids. Uh, a lot of them, husband and wife, work for the same entity and so this is uh, their mortgage bill keeps coming regardless. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, it's not just financial either. That there's the uh, the whole personal aspect of it. Every one of us, when we go to work every day, we want to feel like the work that we're doing is somehow making the world a better place. We've invested years and years of our life into doing something we believe in, and even if you're sitting at home knowing that a check's going to come and you don't have any work to do, you're still sitting there thinking, what's happening to the work? that I've invested my life in, the, the things that I've been trying to do to make the world a better place. I've been in, involved with federal government matters and employees for a long, long time, and my mind is just spinning. I mean, in your world, uh, FBI and folks in those agencies aren't doing, they're not at full throttle. And nope. uh, now it, it's, it's good to know that the Department of Defense and a number of agencies are not affected by this, but you know, uh, so many uh, are and, and locally, uh, uh, it, it will have an impact, and, and it already has in terms of uh, mortgages. And uh, we have a we have a federal prison here that's directly impacted absolutely. a lot of people that work at the Talladega uh, facility. A lot of them live in our county, and they're being directly affected. You know that they can't just not go to work. Um, you know, at the same time, you have people with probation and pro federal probation and parole. These people that are out are supposed to be supervised. Well, there's nobody there getting paid to supervise them. So there's a lot of people that might be claimed as non-essential that's really essential. So. so even if we don't see it, there are impacts here locally uh, to the economy, to individual households, and to the overall economy where these households aren't going out and spending that money in the community. Absolutely. The multiplier factor is being felt right now. And I think it's just important for all of us to be appreciative of the condition and the situation sure. these folks are in. And uh, for those who uh, get paid eventually, that, that's terrific. But like you said, you know, we wake up every day wanting to do our thing, to help out and uh, play our part. And uh, I have friends that are, that are watching television at home right now and just wishing they could be behind their desk or right. uh, doing their work. All right. All right, we need to take a quick break. We're going to talk some more with uh, Pete Conroy here in just a few minutes. And we'll also have our second half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.
And welcome back to the second half of our lineup. First up this half, Tabitha Bishop. Miss Bishop, last known to be living in Anniston. She's wanted for child support, the face of a deadbeat mom. And this is Brian Sanders. Mr. Sanders, last known to be living in Montgomery. He's wanted for failure to appear for theft by deception first. And take a look at Mindy Patterson. Miss Patterson, last known to be living in Oxford. She's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance. And here is Stephen Hunter, Mr. Hunter, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance. And take a look at Caleb Sweet, Mr. Sweet, last known to be living in Anniston in Jacksonville. He's wanted for failure to appear on possession of marijuana first, possession of a controlled substance, and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And last up in our lineup this week, Jarrell Edmonds. Mr. Edmonds, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for failure to appear on giving false name to a law enforcement officer. And that's it for the lineup this week. If you know the whereabouts of these folks, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers, that number 256-238-1414. All right, we are back, and we'll have the uh, crazy criminal coming up here in just a few minutes, also the Crime Stoppers segment of the show. But uh, right now we're talking with, with Pete Conroy from Jacksonville State University. We talked a little bit about the government shutdown and economic effects from that. But let's talk about something, well, I was starting to say more fun right now because we're talking about movies, but blood on the doorstep, is that right? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> it's, it, you know, the, the topic is a really tough topic, and it's something that the sheriff deals with every day. And, uh, but from, from my point of view, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a discussion point that uh, community can rally around and uh, various viewpoints can uh, be, be discussed. Uh, at Longleaf Studios up in Jacksonville, we have uh, a regular series of documentaries and some of them, uh, well, they, they run the gamut. And, uh, but uh, last year we had one about, I guess it was the, the over-militarization of some police forces and how that can cause problems, and in other instances it's, it's absolutely necessary. Matthew did a fantastic job of discussing the matter. I really enjoyed it, and the, and the people that asked questions, I, I felt we had a genuine, good conversation back and forth, and I think that's important. Well, if you remember, I started the evening out by saying, hey, if you're the kind of person whose mind cannot be changed, <laughs> just leave now right. <laughs> on either side of the issue. But if, you, if you're open to new information, stick around because you might learn something. That's and, the key. Uh, Get a little bit of information. I saw a study recently that said the more opinionated you are, the less likely you are to actually know what you're talking about. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, once you get into the actual knowledge of a subject, you see some gray areas. And it's great to have an opinion without just based on what you think is common sense, but that's not fact. Well, we see that, in the, we're seeing that in the government now. Nobody's willing to go, hmm, is there a different way or better way? Can Well, you might actually have a, a good idea, even though we're not on the same uh, political side. So uh, I think we need more of that open-mindedness yeah. to be able to find solutions to our problems. But getting back to this uh, this uh, particular project, we're going to have a, uh, a premiere, right. aren't we, at uh, JSU on... Uh, Valentine's Day, is it right? Yeah, it's the worst <laughs> possible <laughs> to my, day. To my, to, my, to my blood on the doorstep. I mean, you know, if you go to see this, you, do, you might not have a doorstep to come home. If you hate well, Valentine's Day. Uh, or <laughs> you and uh, your spouse just really cares about law enforcement and community matters, something that yeah. you love. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a stretch, I know it. But uh, there will be uh, this premiere on Valentine's Day. And uh, if you're sick and tired of the same spaghetti dinner and another box of chocolate, maybe do something that means something with your spouse and, and come on out. We'll have, uh, we start off at six o'clock. This is the 14th. This is Thursday, the 14th of February. And uh, we'll start off with uh, a reception and uh, we'll have red wine. <laughs> maybe we'll serve chocolate, uh, come to think of it. But uh, then at seven o'clock, the premiere starts. And this is a, a, a documentary about a Milwaukee uh, situation where a schizophrenic was shot, I think, 14 times by law enforcement. And, of course, it just stirred up the whole matter about uh, uh, de-escalation tactics, mental health awareness. And, uh, but as you're well aware, uh, it's a symptom of uh, a world that under-recognizes mental health issues. And it just so happens that you guys are on the front line. And it's a much bigger discussion about what happened in any one place. But uh, we tried to bring all these different viewpoints to the table and uh, we, we, we hope to do that on the 14th. And uh, we invite everyone, it's free. You just gotta sign up by going to the Longleaf Studios uh, website or Facebook page. 
And uh, if you want the red wine, you've got to be of age. <laughs> where where exactly does invited. this take place? Is it at the Longleaf Studios that will be having the premiere? Or? Yeah, it's actually at Longleaf Studios. And, and for people that don't know where that is, how can they find it? You go to Jacksonville, and if you're traveling from the south north, you take a left at the Waffle House, and that'll head you in the general direction. It's very near the Jacksonville Stadium, and the address is 1 O'Connell, Jacksonville, uh, Alabama. It's a nice venue up in there. So we're not going to have any Hollywood A-listers there, but it's still neat to have a, a premiere in Calhoun County. Yeah, and the, uh, the, the film's director and producer will be there, and uh, so after the uh, first hour, which is a reception and an opportunity for folks to talk, and then after the film, there's this community discussion, and uh, we really want people to participate, and Matthew, hope you can be there sure, if you sir. can. You know, and one thing that people, like the issue in Milwaukee with this guy, it become news, and, and they said, oh, this is terrible, you know, this is bad, this one thing happened, but people don't realize how often law enforcement deals with people with mental illness because when they're mentally ill, they're not making good decisions, which normally leads to a contact with us. Uh, just Sunday night, we had a contact with a mentally ill person where he ran, jumped out, jumped back in the car, jumped back out, and it was a really dangerous situation for him and for the deputy. And uh, it's, it's, you know, there's always two sides to the story, but this is a common event that, that something needs to be done for these people with a mental illness so we can help them better. Well, I know Calhoun County has been a leading county in Alabama with a mental health officer. And uh, that's, that's a, one of the things that can be done around the state. And uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of things for everyone to be aware of in order to solve these problems. All right. Well, the premiere is going to be at Longleaf Studios in Jacksonville. And if you want to uh, get some more information about this and uh, put your name on the list to, uh, to show up, you can uh, look for them on Facebook, Longleaf Studios. All right. We'll be back in just a minute with the Crime Stoppers segment of the show and our Crazy Criminal of the Week on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the Crime Stoppers portion of our show where we ask you to help our investigators with the following cases. First up, on January 14th, the breaking and entering of a vehicle of an automobile was reported at the residence of Royal Troon in Anniston. And sometime on January 15th, we had a breaking and entering report was filed at the residence on Kingsway Drive in Anniston. They got away with craftsman tools, sunglasses, and a blue North Face jacket. And last up on your caseload this week on January 15th, a burglary was reported at a storage building in a residence on Mill Branch Road in Jacksonville. Two steel chainsaws, a craftsman welder, an air compressor, steel trimmer, and other miscellaneous tools were taken from that location. If you have any information on these cases, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers. That number 256-238-1414. Remember, we want your information and not your name. Stupid! You're so stupid! All right, Sheriff, sure, time for a crazy criminal, and uh, this week it's a gentleman by the name of Ivory Washington, and uh, this guy made a grenade at a sushi restaurant in Iowa to prove a point. Hmm. Uh, he says that uh, people don't take these types of threats seriously enough, and to prove his point, he made an improvised explosive device that looked like a hand grenade right there at the table. How did he have bomb making materials at a sushi restaurant? I don't know, but some of the other customers noticed what he was up to and they, uh, <laughs> he ended up actually, they got concerned about it and the restaurant owner was concerned. So he calls the police, the, the guy himself, it will not Mr. be Washington. the first time that somebody has called the police and they go to jail. That <laughs> happens more frequently than you would think. You he know? insisted it was not really an explosive device. The uh, the bomb squad that responded said, oh, yes, it is, and you're coming with us. Sounds <laughs> like his, he was uh, proven wrong. Yeah, you he know? proved a point. He proved a point. He just <laughs> happened to prove his theory that was wrong. So. <laughs> right. All right, that's all the time that we have for this week. We'll be looking for you again next week, but hopefully not in the lineup or with a hand grenade at a sushi restaurant on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.